I'm Chris Trott with Team TaylorMade, and this is Trotty Does Scotland. Woke up this morning, went through the town of St Andrews. It's starting to get the hype for the Open Championship. It's obviously a big university town, so it has a cool feel to it. But the Golf Spectator is now coming into town, so it's starting to get an energy and a flow. Grabbed a coffee, went up to old Tom Morris's grave, which it's special. I'd do that, I'd suggest doing it if you're going to St Andrews, because it, it's such an iconic part of the town, right at the top end of it. Then we walk back through, past some beautiful university buildings as you come down towards the 18th of the old course. You just realise the close proximity of golf to this town and what it means. It's the smells, it's the energy, it's the views. You're in the home of golf and you've got a moment just to capture it. It's, it's quite special. Our next stop on this journey is the championship course at Carnoustie. I've been so fortunate to play this once before, but not on a day like today. Scotland's brought the weather. Hopefully we can bring the golf. Late tea time. So again, you know it's going to be wind calming, great conditions. It's hard for me to hide my energy and excitement for this place because it's, it's my top three golf courses in the world probably and we're getting to play it. First hole championship course at Carnoustie. It's a tough one. It's playing from these pegs 400 into the draft. I'm going to try and hit this just at that face of the trap we can see. That's a long way out there with the wind so it should be good. You never know with your first tee shots. They can either be rips or you can be treated to someone, something. Especially this one into breeze. It's going to require a good hit. Couple of practice swings, go through your routine. Sign of good things to come. Let's see how we get on. Just busted one down one, which is always good, and then crushed a tee shot down two, and I can feel the vibe going. I hadn't been there since the Open that I worked for Team TaylorMade and servicing the players. Now I'm getting to walk on that turf that has meant so much to me in sort of my journey of golf. Just a magical, magical golf course, great company, and a good time of day to play it. This was one of my most enjoyable experiences of the trip. Signature holes at the great Carnoustie. We cannot pass this hole without talking about Mr. Ben Hogan. This is hole number six in 1953. He famously hit this down the out of bounds and cut it back every day with a persimmon driver. Hence why the hole is called Hogan's Alley. The championship tee now is back there about 80 yards, but you can imagine Hogan stood here just hitting a little cut down the left side on this long par five. You got traps down the right. Obviously, if you push one, no problem for Hogan. Let's see how we do. From there, it's a second shot into a par five. We'll probably go off one tee block back, but this is definitely a key signature hole at this golf course. I remember we were capturing a piece signature holes and I was saying to our camera guy, I'm gonna hit a draw off the bunker. And then last minute I was like, no way, let's take on Hogan's Alley, let's hit the shot, let's make this work. And just played the hole so well. And I remember going around with the group and we were chatting to the pro there and we we're talking about Tiger's golf shot that he hit, I think on 10 out of that bunker with gap wedge. and. Just you realise iconic moments on iconic golf courses that have played such a role in golf as we've all viewed it as just lovers of the game. And then to walk on that turf, you can't do that in any other sport. This is, this is the actual turf that these guys played on and we're all having our own game and talking about moments that have meant so much to us in golf. Get to the green, the job's not done. Look at the hole, you've got a swinging putt. We talked about how tough this one can be. You need to stay down on your left to right putts. See the pace, see the line, roll it in. 
sneaks in the edge, that's a birdie on one of the most iconic holes there is on this golf course and in the history of the game. Just a short walk to the next hole, very happy with that. Another signature hole here at Carnoustie has to be the last. We've made it to it. It's been a beautiful evening. All that's between us and the clubhouse is 444 yards into the breeze. The tee shot is the tough scenario here. You need to be bold. You need to go straight at the clock in the hotel. Today's breeze, you can probably go at that trap on the right with driver as long as you give it some height. It's only 290, but it is cold and it is late in the day. From there, pretty easy shot, but much like the golf course, it's all dictated to by the wind direction and what is happening in that moment. A great finishing hole, extremely iconic, a lot of big moments here. Looking forward to playing it. So this shows you how great Lynx Golf is. It was 290 to the trap, into the breeze, but it's hit the undulations, and this is what you're left with. It's such a beast, it's such a card wrecker. Now you got a shot over the burn. I'm just gonna try and hack this out. I mean, typical UK Lynx Golf, not quite in, not quite out, it's nasty. I'm gonna be happy with just a splash out here. Tough, gonna to have about 160 from there. You can't help but feel that's where your drive should have been. 144, the iconic third shot in my case, should be second. Into the breeze, let's just hit a flighted one up there. Carnoustie in the books. The last stop of our trip is Musselburgh Lynx. It's been here since 1672. Inside the racetrack is where we're about to go and play golf with these things to finish off the trip. Just picked them up. Looks like a cheeky little forward. Kind of sits quite nice, to be honest. Then I've got what could be a couple of long irons, a wedge, and the equivalent in the day of the Spider GT Potter. Looking forward to getting out there and giving this a go. I have no idea what to expect. This one's gonna be an interesting one, but a good fun one to finish the trip. I think you realize at this point, <laughs> everything you've been doing to, to here had history. This is ridiculous. And you pull in, it's inside a horse track, and you, you have absolutely no expectations because you know you're about to play it with Hickory. You have no clue how that first golf ball is going to fly, the condition or how it's going to run, how the course is going to play, what the greens are going to be like, and you straight away just are back in time with very little expectation and trying to imagine what the people who first found this turf, what they'd have been experiencing when they played this golf course. It's like a week for I. It's not bad. It comes off a lot quicker than what I thought. Club's very light, weird to get a feel for it, but I think it's gonna have to all be feel. Ball goes higher than you think, and actually gets off this hard turf okay. Never loosened up before, just hitting pitch shots like this, so we'll see. I remember seeing the club, the bags lined up against the wall that we were gonna use, and I quickly put my sort of work tailor-made head on, and I'm grabbing a couple, and I'm looking at lie angles, thinking I wouldn't be able to find anything that would suit me, be flat enough, and. It was the opposite. All of them sat in a way that I felt, well, I've got half a chance. 
Then we get on the tee and I see the golf ball and I quickly realized, okay, maybe I don't have half a chance. And we've got this par three and I'm gonna have to hit this little wooden club. And I'm thinking, I don't even know if I can get there. And then you hold it and the grip was so slippery. And I'm like, okay, well, not sure how this is gonna work out. And you know, there's a bit of pressure because you're filming it, you want to capture it, you want to do it first time. Muscle Bro Links opening tee shot with one of these and one of these. So it's going to be interesting to see how this flies. I mean, looks like a great fun track. I've got a couple of guys showing me around here. 240 on this par three. They've both gone out to the right. Um, I have no idea how this club's going to come off at all. So any swing thought I've got to this point, I don't know. Just pick a target and let's see what happens. Stand back, everyone. This could be interesting. These gloves are going to get tested for sure. Here we go. Definitely a little fade. It's all right. It's sat quick. We're good. We're going to find it. Let's see how we get on. Matt, I got the first tee shot away. I was surprised. It, it, it went okay. I was actually quite happy with it. After that, it's just the lottery. How's this golf ball going to react? How's the putter going to react? Good times though, and I started to adapt, which I liked, and I'd love to actually do the whole thing again. It would be good to go around again for sure. When we played a couple of holes, I started asking Stephen quite a lot of questions, and you realise what this place means to him, what the ground means to him, and the research he's done on the history of this amazing turf. Signature hole here at Musselboro Lynx. This is the last one on the trip. It's hole number four, it's 431 yards. We're going off the plates. There's a lot of information coming up down here. That's why I've brought in the club captain. He's kindly looping for me down here. This is Stephen Hill. Now, before we get going and you start telling me some of the awesome stories about this golf hole, tell me what I'm using. This is a gutty Pertzer golf ball. It replaced the feathery golf ball. It was originally smaller. This is a modern sized golf ball. So the older golf ball, it was much smaller. This is a modern ball. Okay, perfect. And I've had the luck of seeing it the last few holes. It's been an interesting flight yeah. to this point. Yeah, of course. I see a lot of people down here. Run me through, it's the same as St Andrews, right? Common ground. Yes, it's common land. So anybody can walk the course. You can graze sheep on the course. Nobody does it anymore, I'm glad to say. This is Mrs Foreman's Hole. It's a, probably the most famous pub in world golf. And that's the white building down there? Yes, okay. yes. Mrs Foreman's a formidable landlady in the 1800s. Big stout woman, any nonsense. You got thrown out. Um, there's a famous story when the parts were playing the Morrises here. Um, the local, local miners came out, were jeering them. One of them actually kicked his ball in the sand. So old um, Tom Morris walked into the distillery and refused to come back out. Unbelievable. It's amazing to think that all the boys have been here, Tom Morris and company. Yeah. What's the line here now? I take it down the left side towards the three windows? The lines are three windows. Yeah. Okay. Let's give it a ride. Okay. So green's tucked away down by Mrs. Foreman's. See if we can strike one. Just down the left side. Give this thing a full send and get it knuckling down there. That's lovely, right? Perfect. That's what you want to hear. Perfect. Bound on. Let's go, good start. He would tell me about the bottom corner and how there was a lady who ran a bar or a pub down there and the betting that would happen and how the people of the area would bring professionals in to gamble and to carry a wage for them around this actual turf. So the key is for this golf, and we've talked about it these first few holes, you need to be bouncing it up, right? Yes, you can't fly the greens. Okay, you and in to... true fashion, I mean, that's a 150 plate there, yeah. is it? So we got like 165 One si down yeah. breeze. Yeah. But you can't fly it onto the greens, and with the stick where it is, it's tricky. Yeah, you'll find if you bump it short, it invariably runs to the right. So you've got to be really close. 
Okay. Always spot on with your second shot. All right, let's, uh, what do you think? Down breeze off the right. I managed to grab a seven iron this time. See a little choppy seven. Or the wedge. Go One the of seven. these two. Go with the seven, I would say. Okay, seven iron. Little fade in there if I can. Yep. Good luck. Thank you, yeah, I'm just thinking <laughs> the same thing. Little choppy fade. Didn't move last time much. At the flag, hold it against the breeze. Leave it wind. Just off the back. Just bounds on, doesn't it? Yeah. That's the thing, it just bounds and bounds. I was actually quite happy with that. So tell me then, Steve, about how long how long's the golf course been here and how long has or is this the original layout? Originally there was seven holes up until 19, 1838, then nine holes in 1870. The first recorded round was actually 350 years to go in 2nd of May by Sir John Phyllis of Ravelston in 1672. Previous to that, Mary Queen of Scots played the course in 1567. We reckon the course goes back to the 1450s, so it's quite an old course. No joke. Yeah. And then Mrs Foreman's here, you were talking to me about how she would serve beer through the, the wall. There was a hatch. See where the two windows are? Yes. The one at the right hand side had a hatch. You yeah. could order your drink and the drink got passed through the window there. <laughs> so when we opened the new clubhouse, they opened up the window again and served us all a half pint of beer. Brilliant. And just look at how undulating the greens are and everything is the original design, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no, there's no false movement, movement of land. This is how the land was been for the last 500, 600 okay. years. And it was awesome to capture the energy of someone who was coming at this from a completely different vibe to obviously where I am day to day, but we could connect on something to do with golf even though we were coming at it from two completely different areas. And that's another cool thing about the game. See if we can get this bad boy to work one yep. last piece of magic. Hold to the right. Hold to the right. Good read. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a great test. Even now, it's a lot of fun. I think this pin position is nasty. It's a fabulous four at four months. Yeah. Fabulous. No joke. Let's see what the next hole's got in store. Thank you. end of the trip now we go into heading to the docks in it's well known for its bar games everyone's vibe is excited because we obviously now have all the stories especially of Musselburgh links and we're finishing the trip wrapping it up and I think this is the best place to do it it's one last team dinner together and after that drinks and a wind down and Lurch and I got into a couple of competitive games there in the bar which was fun Oh, yeah, you just take all the balls, yeah, sure. That missed, oh, I won the ball, I won the ball. Oh, you enjoy! Let's just play Lurch's game. Everyone play Lurch's game. You look at a trip like this and you reflect on it, there's been so many great things, so many firsts. Kilt fitting, the whiskey tasting, hanging out with the Four Play podcast guys, having this now experience that you'll always build on and reflect on. Just an amazing trip and, and so many highs. The group did great on it. The energy was great. For me, being able to share my knowledge about new equipment but to a much wider audience has been an amazing experience. And to be able to give back to people beyond tour players and help them understand in anything they may want, even the four play guys when it comes to my TaylorMade Plus, helping them through that process of what they can learn from one round to the next, and then also giving explanations on Hito 3 or on Stealth UDI products. It just shows you where we're at when it comes to my own journey in golf. And this trip was, I have to be honest, probably one of the best I've done with TaylorMade. It was, it was awesome.